welcome to Sarah Stamping Retreat. Today I'm really looking forward to sharing some inky embossing techniques with you. I've got lots of different techniques to share and to do that we're going to be using this kit that comes with this month's creative stamping magazine. So you've got this Geo Diamonds embossing folder and this huge big A4 stamp set and we're going to be using lots of these different stamps to go with the techniques as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got this purple cardstock from Spellbinders and I'm going to just normal emboss that with the embossing fold. And I'm going to cover over the bottom of it so it doesn't matter that the embossing fold is not quite big enough. I'm just going to emboss this top part and the bottom part will be covered anyway. So then you can see that that's got a really nice pretty pattern now. So now I'm going to use the first of my inking techniques and I'm going to put some Versamark re-inker, it can be any of your kind of embossing inks that you do this with and it does work with the embossing ink pads as well, I just prefer the re-inker for a bit of a thicker layer. If you don't have a re-inker try it with your normal embossing inks. And I'm just covering my brayer with that ink. So you can see my brayer is nice and shiny all the way around now and what I'm going to do is I'm covering the wrong side so we're going to deboss this so I'm covering the back of my embossing folder with this and this technique can get a bit messy so I'm doing it on some scrap paper so the trick to this is using a really light hand with your brayer so that not too much goes down between the bits where you don't want it and also I like to use a piece of paper that's larger than I want so that if there are any pieces where I've got a bit of extra ink or something in, I can just chuck those off. So then I'm going to pop my paper in and we're doing the debossing version of this technique now but I'll also show you the normal embossing version of it later on as well so you can see both sides. It's really nice effect both sides. So I'm going to pop that through my die cutting machine as usual. So now I've got sticky ink on the deboss side of that. So then I'm going to sprinkle on some silver embossing powder. This is the super fine polished silver from WOW. And then I'm going to heat that up. And you can see that you get this lovely filled kind of look to your embossing folder. You can also see, particularly around the edges, where the brayer catches a bit more, you get more of this additional embossing powder where you don't want it. So that's why I like to do my piece bigger than I really want it and then I'll cut it down. So I'm going to cut this down to four and a quarter by two inches. And then you can see we're left with this really nice piece. And that will go on there like that. I want it to look almost like a dance floor. So then I'm going to use my alternate jet black ink to just stamp this on some white cardstock. So I'm using the three girls together. And then I'm going to use my alternate alcohol markers to colour that in. So then I've coloured my girls and I've also coloured around the top half of them with a purple to colour to match my background so that they kind of blend in a bit with that so it's not kind of like a white outline popping off the page. Also, as I've been building up my card, I've actually cut all my pieces down a little bit because I preferred them a bit smaller. So now this is four inches square, this is four by one and three quarters, and this is four and a quarter inches square, that's just some silver mirror card. So I'm just going to glue those together. And then I'm just going to glue a thin strip of the silver card across that join. And then I can just trim that edge off and I can glue it onto the silver mirror card stuff. And I'm going to add some fine pads behind the gals. And then I'm also going to pop some frame pads behind the sentiment. So I've just 
heat embossed let's celebrate from the set onto some of the purple cardstock So then I'm kind of deciding between two different coloured backgrounds. So we've got this pink background, we've got this purple background. The purple's a little bit more sophisticated, I think I'm going to go with purple, but the pink's kind of nice and bright. So I know some of you will prefer that. So I thought I'd show you both, because I was quite on the fence about it. And then that's that card finished. So then for my next card I'm going to use a really similar heat embossing inky technique but you'll see that it turns out quite differently because I'm going to use the front of the embossing folder instead of the back. So the front with most embossing folders is the kind of one that's either colourful or some brands seem to put their name on the front that kind of thing and it's usually the side that's a bit kind of flatter so I'm going to run that over with my embossing folder and I've not even re-inked the brayer because usually it's good to go for a couple of runs so I've got a five and a half by four and a quarter inch piece of the purple cardstock I'm just going to lay that in like that and then I'm going to emboss that. So then I'm going to cover that with silver embossing powder. So I'm going to heat that up. So then you can see but by using the other side of the embossing folder and the purple cardstock, we've got a really different look. So then I'm going to grab these two roses from the kit. And I'm just going to heat emboss a bunch of them onto this pink cardstock. And I'm going to use the same silver embossing powder to do that. So then the nice thing about having the flowers on the pink base is that you've already got the base colour. So then I'm just going to go in with my Rubellite Alternate Marker and just add in a bit of shading. And then I'm going to add in some pink alicious just to blend that out a little bit. I'm going to go through and colour all of those and cut them out. So then here I've got all my flowers and I also did some leaves as well in the same way. And then I've heat embossed this sentiment, true friends are never apart, maybe in distance but never in heart onto some pink cardstock and then I've got a piece of the purple cardstock to fit around that and then also I cut this down slightly so that initially it was a full card front size now it's a quarter of an inch smaller so I'm going to glue this onto my card front And then I'm going to start placing some of these flowers at the end. I'm going to pop some of these smaller ones up on fine pads to give it a bit of extra dimension. So then I'm going to glue the pieces for the sentiment together. And I'm going to glue that into here. And then I'm going to glue in some of the leaves. And 
And then I'm just going to trim off these excess bits down the back. So and that's that card finished. It's got loads of glimmer to it. So for my next card, I've got a white card front. And I am just using this Crystal Violet ink from Altenew. And I'm just going to ink up the front of this. And I'm just going on to it really gently because I don't want it getting down all the um, gaps in the embossing folder. But equally, I want it nicely covered, so I'm kind of doing a bit of a soft kind of rub over. Now you can see some marks where I've kind of gone round. You can kind of like go up and down if you want to kind of get a look that way. You will get a slight texture when you emboss it. And then I'm going to pop that in there. I've got a little bit of ink on that. I'm not worried about it. You're not going to see the back of it. So then I'm going to pop it through my die cutting machine like this. So then there you get this beautifully inked piece. You can see what I mean. You get the kind of texture from where you added on the ink in the background. I think it looks quite nice. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into strips. So then I've got a four and three quarter inch square piece of cardstock. I probably will end up cutting that down a little bit at some point but I like to start off with a bigger piece and then I can always cut it down so I've got half inch strips of the embossed cardstock I've got quarter inch strips of this green cardstock and I'm going to lay them across the square And as we put this on, you'll see that I'll need to cut it down a little bit because these pieces aren't quite big enough to fit across the square. And I'm going to trim these ends off so I can use the, the ends again. then you can see we've got that. Like I said, I'm going to cut it down to get rid of some of these bits. But I want to make the other elements of my card first so that I'm sure what size I want it to be. You can see that doing that inky embossing technique really adds a texture to those stripes that makes a really lovely background. And then for the main image for this one, I'm going to use this kind of boy's stamp. To get the perfect image with new stamps, I like to cover them with Versamark first and then put the black ink on. So then I'm going to colour these with my colouring pencils. So then you can see I've got those coloured. I've also just heat embossed that Let's Go Have Some Fun in white embossing powder. So that's the opaque bright white super fine from WOW. Then I've cut this piece down to four and a half inches square and this piece I've cut down to an eighth of an inch smaller than that. So we can layer those up. And then I'm going to add some frame pads behind these elements. There's the finished card. So then for this next card, we're going to do the heat embossed letterpress technique again. I'm going to ink up my brayer again. I'm going to add that on the front colourful part of my embossing folder. We're really going to step up this technique this time. So I'm going to add in this and emboss it in my die cutting machine just like I did last time. And this time I'm going to use the Primary Ebony Super Fine Embossing Powder from WOW. And then I can heat that. And 
So we've got this cool background and I'm going to use my alcohol markers to colour in the pieces that are embossed and that way we get a really nice colourful embossed look and I think it really steps up the look of the embossing folder. So then I've got a five inch square pink card blank and I've cut this down so it's four and three quarters across. And you'll see it doesn't reach all the way down but I've also got this piece of grey cardstock so that's one and a half by four and three quarter inches and that's going to go towards the bottom of our card. I've also heat embossed this car stamp in black and then coloured it with my markers. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to stamp this we did it down here. So I quite like this as a celebration card. I think that looks a bit like fireworks. So I'm going to stamp this down here. Then I'm going to heat emboss it in black. And then I've got this piece of white cardstock, just a really thin strip. And I'm going to cut that off because I want to make road markings across this so that it looks like the car's on the road. So I'm going to cut a piece and then I'm going to move that along and use it to measure out the other pieces that I'm going to cut so that they're all roughly the same length. And then I'm going to glue those across the middle of my road. So then I'm going to glue these pieces onto the card. And then I'm going to pop up my car on some frame pads. So I think that's a really nice celebration card. So then for my final card, we're going to create a shim for the embossing folder so that we can get an oval shape in the middle that won't get embossed like the outside will. So I've got two pieces of cereal packet and I've taped on an oval die and I'm going to die cut that. I don't think it will probably die cut through the two at once but it will leave an impression on this back one that I can then use to die cut that in exactly the same place because they need to be in the same place. So then I've got my two frames and I can glue the two pieces together and once you have made this then obviously you can use it again and again because it's just going to be a shim and you can use it with all different embossing folders and you can also use the reverse so the pieces that you've cut out of the middle to get just an oval of embossing in the same way so we've got those two pieces glued together so then i've got an a6 piece of card and i'm going to heat emboss these people in the middle of it and heat emboss those in black. And you can see how, because I've used a super fine embossing powder, all that detail has been picked up. So now I'm going to just ink this up again with my Versamark ink. I'm not even re-inking it from the last time because there's already still some ink left on it. And then what I'm going to do is put this in here. And what I need to do that I probably should have done really before I ink that up, but never mind, is tape this on the back of here. So I'm just going to use some of this yellow tape from Spellbinders. And I'm going to add that on there. Then I'm going to pull this down over the top. And then I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine but what's going to happen is that this is going to count as one of the shims so I'm going to take a shim out when I run it through. So it'll be different for each different die cutting machine but where usually I would use these two with this, with this plate, 
I've actually used these two with this cutting plate which is slightly thinner and see that's just a slightly thinner plate than that to allow for that shim and you can see that now we've got our people and they're inside this flat unembossed area so obviously it look a bit weird for the embossing to be over the people as well and then I've got this honeybee stamps be kind embossing powder that's one that they've done with wow and I am just going to cover this with that so you'll notice that it didn't stick down here properly so probably I needed to ink the sprayer up a bit more but I'm going to cover that with the sentiment so we're going to lose that bit so then I've cut that down to a quarter of an inch smaller than my card front so I've got this nice pink card front and I've heat embossed this sentiment from the set in white and then I've cut it using this one of the modern oval dies from Spellbinders but you can see I've cut it out and then I've moved the die along to cut the other end so I get a shorter die cut than the actual die so this is going to cover most of this area down here but not all of it you can see I've got some left here so what I'm going to do to touch that up is just use my wow embossing pen and I'm just going to colour in the areas that I want some extra embossing powder so then I can just add some of that embossing powder over those areas and then I can heat that up so then you can see that looks way better now so then what I'm going to do is just glue this piece of pink cardstock over the bottom here I want that to run across and then this to go on top so I'm just going to position that where I want it and just trim off the excess then I'm going to glue this onto my card base so then that's our final card complete, it's very nice and glittery so now we've got all five of today's cards and we've used different inky embossing techniques for each of them so I hope that you have learnt something new or remember the technique you've not used in a while or uh, if you've, you've enjoyed making the cards with me I'd love to know which is your favourite please do let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate you clicking like below and you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos if you press the bell button and select all then YouTube will also notify you when I've got a new video available. All of the products that I've used for today's cards are listed in the description below and there's also a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today, I hope to see you again soon.